Welcome to Texas Illustrated, presented by BMW, and it's time for The Drive. And, well, there was no game last week to take a drive out of, but we can look at what's coming up this week in one of the more important games the Texans are going to play this year, and that's against the Baltimore Ravens. So we'll take a, look at, a little bit, or take a look at their defense a little bit, take a look at their offense and some of the things that they present in different packages than maybe some of the teams that Texas will face, especially on the offensive side. But defensively, this is one of, it's, it's a typical Ravens group, but they're not as individually great as they've been. There's no T. Sizzle. There's no C.J. Mosley. There's no Eric Weddle. Tony Jefferson is hurt. Now, they still have players. Don't get me wrong. 44 here is one of the best playmakers in the league, Marlon Humphrey. They traded, they traded for Marcus Peters down here. Jimmy Smith is in long physical corner. The last time he played DeAndre Hopkins, he basically ripped his jersey off. That wasn't cool. Earl Thomas is one of the greatest safeties to ever play in the NFL. So they've got some guys in the secondary. And up front, you may not know a lot of the guys up front, but they play pretty well together. But Wink Martindale is the defensive coordinator, and he can put a, an offense in a bind. And here's a great example of that right here against the Baltimore Ravens. The Patriots have a third and 10. So they got the ball 25. Got to get to the 35, and they go three by one. Three and one. The Ravens are going to counter with seven guys up here. And so they're going to show one, two, three, four, five, six, and then Earl Thomas here kind of floating as seven. What Martindale does is try to present a package and say, okay, here's seven guys. Patriots, you decide which ones are coming. You figure it out. Because if you mess up, then Tom Brady's back here having to run for his life, and that's exactly what happened. So what the Ravens do here is they're going to play cover six. And what that means is they're going to play cover two to this side. So Jimmy Smith is going to play a hard cover, two corner, rolled up corner. So he's going to jam and then play the flat. He's going to play the deep half. And then these two guys are playing cover four. Get it? Two plus four equals six. Got it? Okay, we can do math. All right, figured. So that's what they're going to do. So this is blitz zone. We're going to blitz and play zone. So what that means is some of these guys are dropping because they got to get the underneath zones because these guys are basically playing, you know, those three areas. So there's a lot of area here, but you got to cover those, right? So you got to get guys to that area. So they're going to drop somebody. But is it Thomas and that defensive back? Or is it these two guys? Well, the Patriots guessed that it was going to be these two guys. So what they did was they took the center, Ted Karras, and turned him that way with these two guys. I'm sorry, my bad. They thought it was going to be these two guys rushing and these two guys dropping. So they took the center, Ted Karras, and they moved him this way along with these two. So they could have three on three over here, and then they could play two on two with back help over here. But that's not what happens. When Karras turns, you can see these two drop out. And immediately, I can imagine what Tom Brady is thinking, uh-oh, we don't have the right protection. Because now what you've got is three on one, and now you got one, two, three on four. You can math, right? Four greater than three. Somebody's coming clean. And because it's third and 10, and it's Tom Brady, you got a pretty good situation to get a sack or get a throw away and get off the field. And there's Earl Thomas coming through and forcing the incompletion. Take a look at it. You can see the cover, you can see the hard cover two here, which forces him there. Safety help over the top. Then you're basically gonna play cover four here. He drops, he drops. He's gonna, they're gonna play underneath stuff. And then here comes Earl Thomas. You just don't have enough guys to block him. And Tom isn't gonna be able to run like Deshaun Watson. But what I like about this for the Ravens is you can see number 97 here. He's one on three. But what he does is he works out here to get contained. Now, it's a little bit more difficult against Deshaun. It is against Tom Brady. But he's smart and coached well because he starts to get out of here. That if Tom thinks, hey, I can. At least 97 Michael Pierce is there. Earl's coming from behind. They scheme this up really well. Look, there's not a Patriot receiver in the vicinity of that route. Wink Martindale showing you one package, making you think it's one thing, 
and then bring in another. And he's got the athletes in the back end in the secondary to be able to handle it secondary wise so up front he can do some different things he just overloaded right here against the patriots the patriots had the wrong pass protection earl thomas comes through get off the field they punt it back to the ravens go right down the field and score that's how the game got away from the patriots it wasn't this one play but that was a big part of it now let's hop over to the offensive side here and we're going to look at here on the offensive side one of the more unique plays the Texans will face this year. It's called the midline option. Now you see a lot of it in college. You see a lot of it from Army, sometimes from Navy. Option-based teams like to run it. But you don't see a lot of it from the gun. Now, when I coached way, way back when, I lived off this play. So I know this play backwards and forwards. The one thing I didn't get to was running it from the gun. But that's what the Ravens do. And it's, it's a read play, and they force a read. I don't know if Lamar is actually reading it, because looking at his eyes and where his head is, and all that, it doesn't look like he's reading it. But what they're doing is they're forcing a read for a defensive lineman. That's what makes this really hard. Most options you see are what? Speed option. You come out here, and you pitch it maybe if this guy jumps on the quarterback. Those are a lot of the options you see in the NFL. But in college and with this, they're actually gonna run an option inside the middle, midline. That's why they call it midline. So what they're gonna do here is once they finally get set in their diamond package and they got three tight ends. Ricard right here, fullback, but he's also defensive end. Got a sack last week. Forced a fumble that turned into a touchdown for the Ravens. So he plays both ways. Two tight ends right here. Now there's a lot of different things they can do out of this package, which makes it sort of tough. But what they're going to do is they're going to leave Lawrence Guy right here unblocked. Just not going to block him. They're going to take Zeus Brown, fan out here. They're going to take Marshall Yonda and double on Shelton off to the backside linebacker. And then what they're going to do is run the fullback or the tailback, Gus Edwards, right through here. And the whole purpose of this is to draw Lawrence Guy. If they can draw Lawrence Guy inside, that creates, if you think about it, take him out of this play. And you're fanning out here. So there's your seam. And now he's out of the play jumping on the tailback. And you got a double team here. So there's your seam. That's where he's going to run this ball. But now you got to get help on the linebacker. And that's where Nick Boyle comes in the tight end. He's going to get in front of Edwards and come here. Now, Edwards is going to block two guys essentially here just being a fake. He's going to come through here. Guy's got to read this, which is not what defensive linemen want to do. So Guy's going to jump on him. Landon Roberts is going to jump on him, and that leaves just backside linebacker on Lamar Jackson. Not great, to be honest. And you got two guys blocking him, Nick Boyle and then Yonda, who bumps off to him. So you're going to get Lamar Jackson through here. 18-yard run. Now, if you take a look at it from the end zone view, you can see it a little bit better, what I'm talking about. Defensive linemen do not like having to read. They don't. They're used to reading a helmet, reading a block. Okay, this the guy's helmet went this way. He's blocking down. Okay, that's what I do. But when Zeus Brown goes here and Yonder goes inside to double here, Lawrence Guy's like, uh, watch. Just watch the confusion. You can tell. He's like, oh, what do I do? What do I do here? Look at him. He's like, um, mm, what do I do? So he's going to jump in here on Gus Edwards. But Landon Roberts is like, yo, I'm coming too. So Edwards, who does not have the ball, blocks him and him. That's the beauty of the midline option. Now, Yonda is going to help out on Hightower. Hurst is going to take any trash up here. And here comes Nick Boyle reading this whole thing. When he sees Roberts go inside, he's like, well, I go up to the next guy. And so when Hightower bubbles outside of Yonda, that's where Boyle then takes him on. Look at, I mean, there are two guys jumping at Edwards. Look at the lane. Oh boy. Boyle then gets a piece of high tower. Lamar runs the space. 18 yards in the first down. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hold up, John. That's really, really tough. How do you stop it? Well, I don't know if there's an effective way to, to shut it down completely, 
But what you've got to be able to do here is if guy does this, that's, that's natural. For a defensive tackle, that is a natural thing. But you can't have this. What you've got to be able to do is exchange responsibilities. If you see this open. Now, for a linebacker, when a linebacker typically sees that opening, typically in the NFL you're thinking that's isolation. you got to come meet this in the hole. Well, that's what you've got to do here to stop this. What a Landon Roberts should do is let Guy take that and you come meet Nick Boyle right in the hole. You find where Boyle is, come over to the top because Hightower's got that. So instead of going inside Guy, if you come out here, there. That's where you got to go. You got to go here. There you'll meet Boyle in the hole. And now Lamar's got to, uh-oh, what do I do now? And this is the other thing here. This is what makes it problematic because Zeus Brown's got a pretty easy block because he widens out with the tight end. So Guy's got to go here. Roberts has got to take on Boyle. Hightower then fits in over the top. You cannot give that direct running lane. But when Roberts goes in here to Edwards and Guy's unblocked, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, I know what you're saying, but John, it's instinctive for a linebacker to just find the ball. Just This is one of those weeks where your responsibility isn't always find ball, hunt ball, tackle ball, because the ball isn't always where you think it is. That's where Lamar is taking us. Now, when I said earlier, I don't know if he's actually reading what Guy is doing. His eyes, look at his eyes. Typically, if you run a middle out option, your eyes are right there. So I don't know if he's actually reading this or not. This, this might be design midline option. So with his eyes like that, now, they're going to have a run where they take it back that way. I promise you. I promise you that I mean, that he's going to give it to him at some point. And that's where these guys can't get up the field this way. There's going to be a run that comes that way. But all this over here, it looks like it doesn't matter, but I guarantee you Edwards is gonna get that ball at some point. I know that because I used to tell my quarterback, I don't care what they do, hand it off because this is happening on this side. There's room back there. And I can't tell you how many times he just handed straight off the fullback for me and he just went straight up the field. So these guys over here, we've got to play it well too. You've got to be able to front side responsibility. Take the dive, quarterback, play over the top, but these guys have got to play in the backside much, much better than this. They can't be running around blocks like that. This has got to be played a lot more with discipline than anything else. But you can see the Patriots look like they're in great position though, right? Do they not on that? If I freeze it, they don't look good over here, but they look terrible. They look great there. And then boom, boom. Now you're in trouble. When you play an option team like this, or a team that features the option, your responsibility matters. What is your responsibility? And so this is something the Texans are talking about this week to keep Lamar Jackson, this Ravens offense, from exploiting them for 18-yard gains when they can be shut down for two-yard gains. This is a play right here the Patriots should have been able to shut down. But because they haven't seen a lot of it, and because guys played it undisciplined on the play side, they got stung for 18 yards. Texans cannot do that and get away with a win on Sunday. They got to be responsible on the offensive side. They got to be smart and protect Deshaun on the defensive side.